Winter Anime 2024 is shaping up to be one of the most interesting seasons of anime we've gotten. And the reason why is because of the release of Chain Soldier. Now, a lot of people were happy that this manga got an anime adaptation. Quite a few people are actually like anticipating this, having this being one of their most anticipated shows to look forward to this season. And let me just say, you do you, I won't judge you. But what I will say is this isn't good for the show to get an adaptation. Rather, it's not a good time to release this particular show at this point in time. Because as many people are familiar with, anime fans have a history. And recently, they have been on a trajectory to get even worse. And I'm talking about everything that started with Chainsaw Man's with Makima literally turning into dogs to JJK turning girls equally as feral for Nanami and Gojo. This is turning the anime fanbase, in my opinion, into just a degenerate mess. And the fact that we're gonna get another show that basically capitalizes on it, which is great. It's great for the anime production. It's great for the manga. But my goodness, those anime conventions will never be the same. I'm talking, if you thought the Makima Denji stuff at the conventions was bad, just imagine what could happen from this. It's gonna be awful. But it's a good show. So I would say if you wanna check out this show, is it an edgy? Is it borderline anti? Yeah. Is it something that I have seen before? Yes, and I have I've seen things you wouldn't believe. I have lost things you will never understand. And I know things, secrets that must never be told, knowledge that must never be spoken. Knowledge that will make Parasite God's place! And the funniest part of that whole thing is this isn't even the worst. This is actually the most tame show out of all the shows that were listed there. And I think, I don't know if I feel proud of that fact or disappointed because I watched all that filth, but I digress. Sasuke and Peeps is a great isekai because it's not your stereotypical you know, cookie cutter, let's just plug in our character from the real world into this fictional setting. And yeah, that's our story. This actually has a lot of thought behind it. And I do appreciate it. It's about this guy who works for a trading company. And one day he basically gets this parrot. And from some mishap, the parrot actually turns out to be a person from this other world that has magic and kingdoms and it's just basically a traditional fantasy setting and with his help they go back and forth and that's how sort of the story unfolds now this show is great i think i had a great time with it i think the comedy is on point i had a lot of fun looking at the art style looking at the different character designs and i like the exploration of the world and how they really give you a lot of exposition which is very hard to do in fantasy stories and like breaks it down into digestible pieces for you to understand. Now, do they have a moment where I almost got the FBI called on me? Yes, but thank God they clarified it because my goodness, that would have been bad for a lot of people watching. Now, what I also will say is I am also kind of upset that they also did that too with the reveal of her age. Like at that point, just make her an adult like there's this weird obsession with anime recently where it's like oh we're gonna sort of make it sort of a rom-com or contain ro elements of a rom-com and one of the characters is underage or under the age at least in the u.s law is under 18 and i'm just like why just make her above 18 you know make her an adult like why do you do this extra step where she's underage it contributes nothing to the plot and yeah, that's just my little rant there. I just, I just think it's sort of BS that, you know, we have great writing, especially with romance happening. And one of the characters is underage. So I'm like, fuck. Talking about another isekai, this is actually a continuation from an earlier season, which is Moonlight Fantasy. I am so excited for this one because not only was the first opening a banger, the first season was amazing. And I think that this actually had the opposite effect of Goblin Slayer, which I loved. Um, because I actually hated Goblin Slayer season one, where it actually started off very lighthearted and very comedic. But the more that the story progressed and the end, like the season one finale, 
turned to very something very traumatic, very sad, and very tragic. And I wasn't expecting it from the show, and it actually cemented it as one of the best or better isekais, in my opinion, because it went that route. And so with the continuation of season two, we get more of that, and I am so excited to see what comes of this season. Now this is the start of something great. Solo leveling is really bringing back the Manwan adaptation craze, and I was disappointed with the first craze, because the first one started off with Tower of God kicking everything off, which was a great adaptation um, for what it, it could be. I still prefer the Manwa, in my opinion, the webtoon, because I prefer the art style there, and the art um, is very hard to replicate with um, within anime, because anime has to be in motion, and the art um, presented in the webtoon is very, well, it's just images, and the images are so complex, that you have to prefer one or the one over the other. It's it's very two different mediums. I'm getting sidetracked here. Okay. The point is is that Tower of God was a decent adaptation. Some would say even great. And then we were followed up with basically two that faltered poorly and tanked the entire manhwa adaptation craze. We had uh, um, the release of God of High School. And the first two, like, few episodes were great. It, it started off great, the animation was actually pretty good. And then once they started cutting out all this content, and basically by the end, you didn't know what was happening because they skipped entire chapters of the source material. A lot of people hated this show, and, and for good reason too. You didn't know what was going on. So um, I'm glad that they're trying to do manga adaptations again with solo leveling. I know that the Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint just got announced too, which I am super excited for because I read that as well. I don't know, I, I, for me, I have a soft spot for webtoons and manwas. Um, when it comes to reading, I do like to read manga, but what I think webtoons does so well is it helps you like start reading and once you read like the first chapter, you're invested. Well, like, and then when you read manga, it kind of takes a little bit, but both are equally good. I just like how Mono pull you in or Webtoons pull you in um, within its first chapter. Now we're gonna talk about Nashville season two, which is Harry Squatter, the boy who lifted. And this show, it, it's also a great show. Like like Moonlit Fantasy, it came out in an earlier season, um, anime season. And this is just, what if we take the idea of everyone who's a magic user and the one person who isn't is just super buff and he can take out all these like all these wizards all these nerds who use magic to show their strength and basically decimates them with his pure strength i think that's just a funny premise um i love mash i think mash is just a really funny protagonist because of his obsession with cream puffs i love his like <laughs> band of friends that he makes along the way and it's just a very light-hearted show despite it talking about discrimination um as like especially like classism with like oh if you um don't have a certain height in magical power you're gonna get looked down upon based on certain people i do like the fact that it really tackles that but in a very fun way and sometimes you need that like instead of having some serious shows which can be good at times you still also need to have that lightheartedness of all right you're gonna like try and beat me with your overpowered magic how about you eat this fist and he punches someone? It, it's really funny. So if you haven't seen Nashville, what like Moonlit Fantasy, I would start watching it because it's a great show and it's currently airing its season two and you can probably catch up. Tale of the Wedding Rings is the harem of the season and Chain Soldier, yeah, you can consider that a harem too, but I consider it more of more edgy than anything. Well, Tale of the Wedding Rings is more, I guess, traditional harem, or uh, let me rephrase that all. Chain Soldier is more like the shonen ecchi, this is more like ecchi harem. And that's definitely made clear, crystal clear with the idea and introduction of the wedding rings. And you need to get a hint of it within the opening, but season two, or sorry, not season two, episode two definitely cemented it as this is going to be a harem because he needs to obtain these rings and when you obtain these rings, you make them your wives. So these rings are held by individual girls and by getting their rings, you basically marry them and then also gain their power. And of course, of course, of course, it's gonna be an ecchi. You already can tell based on 
certain camera angles and basically how it's drawn that is very borderline hentai at times but what i will say is i do appreciate it that the mc isn't like a pervert he actually seems like a wholehearted guy he seems like your traditional harem protagonist who's kind of clueless and i like sort of i guess the world um so far with at least its fantasy setting and i'm interested to see where it goes from here it introduces a nice subplot with the elves right now and how they basically utilize wind magic to conceal their um to conceal basically their capital city and i think that's that's pretty neat so um i'll keep watching this one thanks from the elite season three when we got season two everyone's minds were blown because it has been a while since season one and unlike devil is a part-timer this season two was actually a great follow-up from season one and it felt seamless the transition now season three came out and it also feels very seamless do i love this show absolutely do i think the main character is amazing absolutely do i think he's also insane and a sociopath yes this show is everything i love from one of those um mind game anime you may, may have seen some like Danganronpa, um, you have seen it in Darwin's game or even um, Tomodachi game where it's really centered around trying to think your way around problems and your relationship with different characters um, is basically put um, under a microscope because any wrong move could mean the end of, you know, something as simple as, you know, the class fails and they have to do a punishment to our life and death situation. And so with Classroom of the Elite, I love the fact that we're getting more um, on a Koji and how he is really proving himself to be a badass because every time that a character tries to get a one up on him, he somehow triumphants that, he trumps them pretty easily. And it's almost seemed, it's almost seen to, it's almost seen as low effort like he doesn't even try too much to do so and he doesn't really care about anything at stake he doesn't care about making class d um, move up ranks to class a he has his own motivation of just i just kind of want to exist and there's something cool about that and the more that i watch his show the more i want to learn about more of the reason why he's doing what he's doing and I love the characters that basically interact with him and are also trying to figure out what, what's the deal with him. So, Classroom Elite is great. I am enjoying it. It's definitely my guilty pleasure of the season because I will continue to watch this because Anakoji, you're a beast. The wrong way to use healing magic, I thought was gonna be a generic show. I wasn't expecting anything. I didn't have high hopes for it or anything. And somehow, it turned out to be the standout for me this season, in terms of it being the most underrated. Not only is the animation spectacular, I was blown away by, you know, the action taking place, um, the use of just, um, you know, a fantasy setting to illustrate, um, like, fighting to kingdoms. There's just so much going on here, and I think the comedy is on point. I think... Um, just the idea is on point. I like the uniforms and I like just the premise alone where this guy gets roped into something that he shouldn't have been involved in and he ends up being one of the most integral parts um, to saving this fantasy world. The Undead Unwanted Adventure is kind of the same thing, only a little bit different. And what I will say, I don't like this as much as The Wrong Way to Use Healing Magic, I still think it is still a pretty, pretty good show. The Undead Unwanted Adventure is about this adventure who goes um, basically into this dungeon and he's basically scouring for treasures by himself. He basically works alone and he's very known for being weak. He's not that strong and he wants to get better at his skills. And he accidentally stumbles across this secret boss chamber and this dragon appears and kills him instantly. And so when he reawakens, he's actually a skeleton. So the whole premise of the show is him as a skeleton trying to it's his best to sort of reacclimate into society. Um, because there is a, I guess, stigma against the undead where the church will try and exercise them. And it, it, it may not be the best um, 
at like animation wise it's not the best there are flaws there's use of cg at a lot of times i think it does a decent job of introducing the story the characters are likable enough and i just like the wholesome despite it being a very morbid title and a very morbid pre um, premise it's very wholesome in nature, and I think that's what I think I like about this show the most. And last but not least, this is another fantasy story that I am jumping into. Delicious in the Dungeon is arguably my personal favorite of the season. Now, Delicious in the Dungeon is about what if you basically went down and you were fighting this dragon once again. There's something with dragons that this season with fighting dragons i don't i don't know what's happening but basically the main character's sister gets eaten by this dragon and they teleport away and what happens is the party is disenfranchised and they lose two of their important members and their whole goal is with no funds destroyed gear how do we get back to that floor to rescue his sister and so you already have a goal set and i love that i love that their whole goal is to basically save the sister from the dragon stomach before she's digested and dies. And so the whole premise of the show is they're gonna go on a mission to save her, but they run into this dwarf who is a very skilled cook. And this dwarf basically teaches them that even though they are broke, they don't have any money, they can use survival instincts and eat the monsters of the dungeon and make them into pretty good meals. So the whole premise is they go down they fight these different monsters and turn them into food. And when they get to that dragon, the dwarf actually wants to cook the dragon because um, he's never had um, this red dragon before, the dr red dragon meat. And I just thought that was a funny premise. I think this is a continuation of what Free Ren started, which is this pattern of just having great elves, <laughs> like female elves, just more like just funny shenanigans with them, more comedic moments with them. And I love just the reintroduction of just pure fantasy, not just even isekai, um, just having a great time and going on an adventure with a bunch of friends. And I think you can't go wrong with that. It's basically the blueprints of D&D. &D. That's what it is. So these are the shows that I am watching. I'll probably watch a couple others by the season end and I'll let you know which shows I drop. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. What did you guys think of this video? Do you agree with my picks of what I enjoy? Do you disagree? How do you feel about Chain Soldier? Do you think it's gonna start a new wave, a new trend within the youth that is gonna pollute the anime community even more and lower our reputation? And everyone's gonna look down upon us even more even though we didn't do anything, we're just guilty by association? Or are we gonna have a great time because Chain Soldier is just a funny little show and we shouldn't take it too seriously? Let me know in your comments below. My name is Sayorius, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that?